I told you I was going to be doing a reveal, likely for the next video. Um, so I got a bunch of different parts and goodies behind me that we're going to go over. And I'm going to show you all the parts and give you a rundown of what I'm looking at doing uh, with the car and all the parts that I have here. So starting from the very left of the table. Um, so these are some new lug nuts for the vehicle. Um, I got these yellow in color, yellow rings on the outside, and then a like a black nickel color. These are the Muteki HR38s. And then next to them right here, these are actual wheel studs that will allow me to run the lugs right here. Um, and also I'll be able to delete the crappy uh, factory lug bolts that are a pain in the butt. Next up, we have the BC Racing coilovers. These are some of the best coilovers that you can get for the Dart. Um, they also had Megan Racing ones too as well, but I, did, I got a good deal on these ones, so I decided to spend the money and opt out and go for the better ones. Um, the forums say that these are the ones to go with, so I look forward to putting these on the car and definitely lower it and give it a good stance that it definitely needs. Um, because I am lowering it too as well, I have this rear camber kit. This is also from Modern Performance as well. Um, so these will be put in the rear. There's a spot for these that'll adjust the camber so it's not crazy once you lower the car because that will greatly affect it. Moving on here, some more Modern Performance parts. They make a lot of great stuff for the Dart. This is actually some hood lift struts. So these are the actual struts that go on the hood so you can get rid of that prop. It's kind of annoying and kind of chintzy. So it's got the gas lift struts and then also there's mounting brackets in here too as well. Um, I'm gonna be doing an install video for a majority of the items on here to show you how to actually install them. I'm just showing you them right now and I'll go more in depth later. This is a brand new radiator cover shroud piece. It just goes right on the very front underneath that hood. So I have fun plans for this. This is gonna look really good when I'm done with this and have that installed. Here we have the MPX Performance Lightweight Crank Pulley. So this adds a little bit of horsepower and helps with the throttle response. Comes with hardware and also the belt too as well. Here is the part number for the belt if you needed this, if you were trying to install this and you needed another belt. Here we have a Easy Lip. This is gonna go under the front bumper of the vehicle and give it a little bit more of a aggressive appearance. I have Tail light tint. This makes the rear tail lights look a little bit more aggressive and a lot nicer. These are the radiator hoses. These are from HPS, red in color, silicone. Super nice quality material. Uh, these were not cheap, but it should definitely do the job and also dress up the engine bay a lot better. Came with all the clamps that you needed, and I gotta repair my broken radiator hoses anyways, so I figured this would be a good chance to pick this up. Here we got the Oracle Lighting LED Accent DRLs. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up, and I'll show you what the two of these look like. I got two sets of them, and I'll explain what I'm gonna do with these here. So these are what these look like out of the box. It's just like a silicone strip. It's pretty flexible, um, moves around. And these are gonna be for both the headlights. I'm gonna do an accent strip lighting, similar to what you see in the photo right there. Um, I'm gonna be doing that with the headlights. And then I'm also gonna be putting um, the other set here on the fog lights and giving the fog lights a cool effect too as well. And I might be picking up some halos too. I'm gonna be running ideally the strip on the bottom here and having it come up here and then I'm probably gonna be running a halo right where that bezel is right there. And these headlights, it's gonna give them a really cool effect. OEM oil filter for these, always buy OEM. There's the part number, MO241. Anything else you're wasting your time with. I have some new spark plugs for it. These are the Iridium IX and part number for these right there. If you wanted to pick these up, these are the cheapest and also the best uh, plugs you can get for the money. Coolant, I gotta replace the coolant since I just redid the front clip on the car and there's no coolant currently in it. So same thing with this. Buy the OEM Mopar stuff, it's expensive, but it's the stuff that you need and it's good quality stuff. I have, pull this out here. So this is gonna be a rear spoiler for the car. It's gonna go on top of the rear trunk. It's just like that, similar to the, the Easy Lip, same material. 
um, plasticky, pliable, but it'll look good and give it like a nice duckbill fin type look on the rear bumper. In this box, um, this is going to be super and fun to stall, install on the car. This is going to be a grill badge. This actually does light up. It's got all these wires. I'm, I'm going to hook this up, go right on the front grill of the car. Once I put a custom grill on the car, this should look awesome at nighttime. So this, this is going to be for a coolant tee. It's going to replace a crappy plastic one that always breaks on you. I'll show you what I'm going to do with this later. I have a bunch of different dress up hardware in here for, these are all going to be for the engine bay. I have some M6, M8, a um, bunch of different hardware and fasteners, more good. This is all titanium stuff. So I'm going to burn a lot of these bolts in here to color and it's going to give it a cool effect. But these are all going to go in the engine bay. I also do have some wheel um, valve stem caps, quality ones, these are metal, going to go on my new wheels I just put on the car. Uh, then I also do have a couple of different brass fittings and adapters in here. And these are all going to be for the boost tees and so I can hook up a boost gauge to the car. Which leads me to my next thing are the gauges that we have here. So this one, we have a wideband air fuel ratio gauge. This is from Glowshift. This is a tinted gauge. It comes with everything in here that I need to install for the wideband. There is a direct spot to already install this on the car's downpipe that I'm going to be putting on the car. So it should be a super quick and easy install. It comes with all the wiring and also has your sensor that you need right here. Next up here, I have a OEM Mopar boost gauge. Goes all the way up to 35 PSI, which is more than enough for the car. I'm probably planning to run maybe low to mid 20s in this, 23, 24 PSI would be my guess. So this is gonna be awesome too. I have an A pillar for the car that is gonna go on the driver's side. Um, two gauges, that's what it's going to be for. Um, I have a tow hook for the car, just a JDM racing one for the front bumper. Here is a PTP turbo blanket that's going to go on the turbo and replace the factory shield, which is a little cheaper. So this will keep the engine temps down and reduce heat soaking issues from that turbo. So where the money is. So this is the plan for the car right here. This is the tuning solution that I'm going with. I'm using the Euro Drive tuning and solutions for the car. If you open this up, I believe this is the newer version that they came out with just recently. Um, it actually has, this is like a little touch screen tablet piece here. And there's wiring for this. It hooks directly up to the OBD2 port of the car. I'm planning on getting a stage two tune with this. So basically, you hook this up to your car, you send the tune file into Euro Compulsion. They take that, um, you fill out a form and basically tell them what you want for the tune, give them a complete mod list and tell them what your plans are with the car. They're gonna send you um, a tune back for the car that you will then upload onto your computer, put it onto the little tablet here that they have and then you will upload everything there to your car. So I'm gonna be doing a full video how that whole process works. I've never did any tuning or online, um, tuning of any sort of anything online. So this will be an interesting new experience, but supposedly you're supposed to get some pretty, pretty good gains. And if you're modding the car heavily or even lightly like I am, um, you should definitely get a tune in order to maximize all the mods that you're putting on there. So. This is the plan with the car. Stage two tune, uh, basically full bolt-ons, but this was definitely a nice piece that I will do a in-depth video for how to install and do on your car. Now I do have a fender that I picked up for the car. This is just one of those E-coat fenders. It hasn't been painted or anything. It's basically just primed. Uh, it'll still need to be sanded down, scuffed, and I'll need to pick up some of the factory paint for this car um, and then I can get this installed on and replace that one right there. One of the things that was brought to my attention was how this corner right here specifically has been pushed in a little bit more 
than I was anticipating. You can kind of see it's actually got pushed all the way into the battery. This, and it doesn't meet up with uh, this bracket after I installed it. Just kind of seeing where it fits. Um, so this needs to get pulled out significantly before. There's also a little crease in there too from the, the impact too, just to kind of show how it did get pushed in a little bit. This is gonna have to, this fender's gonna have to come off and this is gonna have to get pulled out before I do any fitting and installation. And from there, I'll have to see how a headlight fits up. I still do need a driver's side black rally headlight to find for this car. But once I get the bumper fitted on and the headlight, then I can see what we got going on here. But at the least, I do have a fender for the car. Now, I also do have, this is the, I think it's the V2, um, or sorry, this is the hood. So here we have the hood. This is the V2 hood. It does have the little scoop here in the front, which it does go all the way through. So I don't know if that's gonna be an issue for like water and stuff getting in here because that's probably directly over the turbo. But this is also just like a fiberglass e-coat. Still does need to be painted. Um, I do have some cool plans for this. I might do a wrap on it actually. But nonetheless, it is a pretty good looking hood. Um, it doesn't have the, the dual scoop like this one does um, on the rear, but I still think that this is a nice aggressive looking hood and beats the stock ones that don't have a scoop. You might be wondering why I'm showing you this car. Uh, this is my 2013 Dodge Dart Turbo, also a stick shift. Um, the plan is I do have a bunch of different parts on this gonna, that I'm also going to swap over and add into the bunch on my other car in order to make that car more complete. This car is basically just bolt-on parts, uh, a couple of mods, doesn't have a tune or anything like that, but sounds good, um, feels good, and it's been a reliable car for me. So a couple of parts I'm gonna take off of this to swap uh, are going to be these in-gen intercooler pipes. Um, so this one here, and there's also this one right here. Uh, this also does have a catless aftermarket downpipe right here. This is gonna be coming off, and I'm just, I'm gonna be swapping all the parts from the other car onto this car right here. This does have an intake. However, this is not compatible with the 2016 model for the other car. It's got some other different connector piece on it. So this is just gonna stay on the car, unfortunately. Um, and I'll have to get something figured out for a different intake. Uh, I also do have the Go Fast Bits diverter valve and also the Forge diverter valve plate. This gives the car an awesome sound when you're making boost and you let off the throttle. I also do have, I know you can't see it, but there's a clutch delay valve on the car that helps with the clutch engagement and not being so slow and laggy and tearing up your clutch. So that's one of the things on this car that I'm also gonna have to pull out. Uh, that's everything that I have done performance wise on it. I also do have these calipers on here that I painted. Um, they look pretty decent, they have a sticker on them. These are like brand new refurbished calipers all the way around. So I'm gonna take these brakes from here and swap them over to my other car too as well. Other than that, that about covers everything that I can think of for the parts on this car that I'm gonna move over. That's gonna be a wrap for today's video. That's all the parts that I have for it currently. I'm sure I probably do have some more somewhere else, but I don't know where they're at right now. And there's still a couple other things that I do need to get for the car. Uh, stay tuned for the next video. I'm probably going to be doing an install of some radiator hoses and um, top off some fluids. And I'll probably be looking at doing a first start and seeing what other work needs to be done to the car.